guess we'll call a meeting to order on that. So um, everybody join me in the Pledge of Allegiance, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, now I'm going to see if I can close my door up here. <clears throat> All right, we will start with uh, the solar minutes of the last meeting. I move that we approve the minutes as written. Is there a second? All right, all in favor say aye. Aye. Do I hear Tom? Okay, I didn't hear him, but all, right. all in favor say aye, please. Aye. There votes aye. All right, moving on. Joel, next on the line. Well, you have uh... Uh, Lisa's uh, financial report for April. And some good news is that compared to a year ago, we uh, we sold a lot more water than April of 2020. <clears throat> uh, our return on rate base is still low, but you remember the last month or two, it was negative. Now at least we're in the positive territory, so we're moving up. And I expect that will continue this spring and summer. Uh, cash reserve is pretty much where we would anticipate. We did have a large uh, bond and interest payment, uh, principal and interest payment that went out, um, 1.2 million. So that uh, hit our cash reserve pretty pretty hard, and we'll recover a little bit for the rest of the year on that. I would anticipate. Um, Otherwise, they did not have any additional notes on the financials. Okay. I get my agenda up here. Keep on going, Joel. <laughs> well, I'll move into the superintendent's report. Right. And for customer relations and fiscal, uh, I guess uh, <clears throat> one uh, piece of news was we returned to the disconnect program as allowed by the Public Service Commission. And at the end of all of our efforts and such, we did disconnect seven customers for non-payment and failure to make a deferred payment agreement. Um, late payment charges will resume in May of 2021, so that's underway now. Um, we're in the process of transitioning to a new <clears throat> payment processor online called Invoice Cloud. We had previously been working with PSM for a number of years and they've been good, but they're a little bit unwieldy when there are problems and, and it's hard to get at customer information as easily as with uh, the new uh, package Invoice Cloud. Um, we had no uh, public service commission complaints filed and otherwise well, with the return to more more normal activities cr and f um for operations as i mentioned april uh, compared to a year ago we we pumped 41 percent more water out of the plant than we did last year so we're we're returning to some normalcy there, which is good to see. Um, we did complete our basin cleaning uh, and sludge removal for the early spring. Uh, that now is uh, finished. There was some pretty extensive maintenance work that the crew had to do. The older basins have mixing systems that are underwater. <clears throat> all the time and they're subject to a lot of grit and sand and damage and the crew normally every year or two has to do quite a bit of maintenance on on those drive shafts and 
fairings that are underwater and things like that. Uh, that's all completed now and all three basins are back up and in service. Um, I think as you might have seen, lake levels have been dropping. We were at record high levels the last year or two, and now we're seeing a return uh, to some lower lake levels. That, that's good in terms of shoreline protection and wave action, not, uh, not, damage, not damaging our shore as much. Um, otherwise, lake temperature on average was 43.8 degrees for the month of April. And we had just a range of uh, maintenance in the plant as usual by the OM techs. And then moving into the distribution system, we had one main break on Ontario Avenue that the crew repaired. Um, there's a new connection at Bookworm Gardens. We assisted in locating the water main in that area for their plumber to tap into. And uh, a lot of activity out on Georgia Avenue for the water main project there and, and street project. Um, we had done our staking for the water main and some setup for that project, which is now underway. Um, pretty much the highlights for attendance report. Do we have any idea the 41% increase in pumpage? Um, can we tell where it's coming from, the industrial side or wholesale? Um, well, if you look, the uh, line uh, under pumping, A-pumping, where it says Georgia Street Booster, that's the station that sends all the water to the industrial park. Okay. So you can see the, the kilowatt hours used there went up by almost two and, two and a half times. So a lot of it took place uh, in the industrial park. Okay, okay. That's, that's one measure we can, we can relate to. Anybody else have any questions for Joel? Nope, not for, not for me. Okay. Uh, uh, seeing I didn't have my agenda up at the time, uh, I take a motion or make a motion to approve the superintendents in full covering all the areas. So moved. I'll second it. All in favor say aye. 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 Fair votes aye. All right, Joel. New business or old business rather. Well, on the raw water improvement project, RWI, <clears throat> um, we're now at 95% detailed design completion. Um, we had a meeting with uh, public works and city planning, city zoning, city attorney, and our engineering firm to kind of go through it one more time and flesh out any issues with uh, the site and concerns over it. Um, we spoke again about uh, redesigning the, the disc golf hole and maybe one or two associated holes that are impacted by the project. And really the project isn't uh, eliminating any of the disc golf holes necessarily, but the fairway to hole number 13 would, be, would have to be changed for sure. Um, but we'll be working with a firm that designs these sites and, and works with the disc golf community uh, on the best way to, to modify the course to fit changes that are coming with our project. Um, <clears throat> one item you'll see coming later is an easement for the project or, or modification of the existing easement, I should say. Uh, so we spoke at length with all those parties about that process and came to agreement about, about that. Um, I mentioned last month the uh, construction authorization was submitted to the Public Service Commission. Uh, they're quite bogged down. One of their lead engineers retired. They have a new person on staff now. Uh, so they've received our request. They have not started reviewing it yet, 
and I'm told that they hope to get at least started in the next one to two weeks <clears throat> going through that project. Um, other news has been more along the, the financing front. Uh, the project did score number seven out of uh, well over 100 state projects for the Safe Drinking Water Loan Program. So what that tells me is that we would almost certainly be funded by the program as, as we move forward. Um, safe drinking water loans fund, you know, the majority of water infrastructure projects that, that score high enough to, to get a loan, and ours did, so that's a, a good outcome. Um, if we did apply for the full amount of the loan, we would expect about a half million dollars in principal forgiveness under the program, which is another good thing. We would ex expect a market, an interest rate that is, that is just slightly above market uh, rate. Um, there's another term for it, but the, the kind of minimum rate. Uh, so it would probably be, you know, at or a little below 3% at this point. Um, <clears throat> so now we have to continue that, that process uh, and, and actually apply for the loan at a, at a somewhat later date. Uh, and, and if we do need it, close on it in 2022. Um, nice thing about the Safe Drinking Water Loan Program, it, it kind of adjusts to what you need. It's like a construction, it is really a construction loan. They don't just uh, fund a certain amount of money. They, they pay invoices as they come in. Um, if we do receive other types of funding, then we simply reduce the amount we're requesting through the Safe Drinking Water Loan Program, and it's all very workable that way. Uh, so our high score was certainly a, a good outcome, and uh, the utility accountant, uh, with some assistance from me and others, uh, did that application on, on our own, as we usually do. Uh, and that was a, a really good outcome. Um, the American Rescue Plan, the state is communicating more with municipalities about, and I'm told that funding is starting to flow and, and the city is uh, in planning and, and discussion about local projects. Thing, there is a specific category for sewer and also water infrastructure projects. And uh, we've had some some contact and flow of information about, you know, potential ARP funds coming to the raw water project to help offset debt service to to pay for the project. Um, I don't have any more details on that at this point. Um, another avenue is that the the uh, the Congress reenacted what used to be called earmark programs, but now it's called directed spending programs. And this is where elected officials are able to, federal elected officials are able to uh, earmark or direct spending to certain projects that they select. And uh, we have been in contact with Senator Baldwin's office about the RWI project and uh, we will be submitting an application before the end of the week on, on, that, uh, on that line of funding as well. I have no idea about the likelihood of, of receiving any funding at all, but we certainly don't want to overlook it as a possibility. Um, I have asked our wholesale customers to, to uh, sign a letter of support um, if, if the utility does not have to borrow, if, if we can borrow less, that means less debt service to the wholesale customers, their, their share of that as well. So it's really a win-win for everybody. Um, but the deadline for application is, uh, is this coming Friday. <clears throat> uh, it's a pretty simple application. Um, you know, one aspect that, that we do have to decide is how much funding to request. Um, the current uh, construction cost estimate is $36 million. And I've tried to ask uh, uh, persons in, in the, the senator's office, you know, are there any guidelines? 
you know, if we ask for too much, is that reduced chance, too little, you know, is there a kind of a magic spot? And I really couldn't find any, I couldn't really get much response on that. Um, the utility accountant and I had some, some communication about it. And uh, the, the board president had given me some communication about it. Um, and I think uh, I've kind of zeroed in on a range of something like 12 to $16 million as a request. And I, I think that's just based out of, you know, trying to ask for a significant amount, but but realizing that, you know, perhaps if we ask for too much, it might reduce our, our chance of getting funding. Um, but I would certainly be open to any uh, board input on, on what, what is the magic number, what, what we should put. We're not allowed to put a range in. I have to put a number down. Um, so I'm coming to the end of that process and, and would, you know, like feedback on, on that. Um, and I think but with that point, I'll just, uh, I'll conclude my update on RWI. Okay, moving on in the agenda, the agenda, number 5.1, approval of the RO seeking modification of the easement. Yeah, so <clears throat> in 2006, the util well, the board directed the superintendent to uh, pursue uh, the project with the city of Sheboygan. Um, utility lands are nearly fully occupied. We have no space for another construction project. Uh, a project of this size also means that we need our current facility fully operational as we're building this new facility. It isn't something that, you know, we can't have the plant out of service for days, weeks, you know, basically at all, all this other projects being constructed. <clears throat> so after a lot of analysis and consideration, the only reasonable site to build this facility is just north of existing utility lands um, along the shoreline in, in uh, Volrath Park. And in 2006, we made a request and uh, the city granted a permanent easement to construct and operate a raw water um, uh, facility at that location. Um, as the project you know, matured and came into fruition and we realized there was shoreline protection issues and we realized the need for a service driveway and just some details that you know would come as you move into a, a, a design process. We realized the existing easement is is a bit too small, and we would like to request a modification of it to fit the final design of the project, and and that includes adding some land towards the lakeside again for the the drive to the north to accommodate some external transformers and then to the south to accommodate large pipes that are uh, crossing to utility lands and to the water treatment plant itself. Um, <clears throat> so we would like the permanent easement modified to a, a somewhat different legal description. It's in the same basic area, but it's a little bit larger. And then we're also seeking a, a utility easement for a sanitary sewer lateral going to the north again, through park lands up to um, uh, Volrath Boulevard, where there's a sanitary uh, sewer main that the city would allow us to connect up to. Um, we, uh, you know, attempted to fit the project under the existing easement, and it just really was, was not feasible given all of the constraints that we're operating, operating under. So the RO would be a, the, the beginning of a process with the, the city to, to modify that easement.
So we've got the, um, the exhibit A1 that shows the permanent easement. And what is the area on that drawing that um, we're talking about changing or adding to? Um, the original easement was 60 feet. You know where it says 72.87 at the north? Okay, um, yeah. That was 60 feet. And the length was more, what was 120 feet in about the same orientation. And then the portion at the end of the southerly <coughs> end is, is where the pipes connect up to existing utility uh, property. So it's just kind of making those a little more continuous. Okay. So originally 60 by 120 uh, in a rectangular shape. Now we're about 73 by 200. Yeah, more or less. So, yeah, that's, I mean, facing the, the west, the, I'm assuming to the right on that drawing is um, the shoreline. That's correct. Any questions for Joe on um, the request uh, for um, a, an adjustment to the easement, a permanent adjustment? The only question I have is, Joe, will the RO need to be signed by us or is our action here sufficient? Uh, the action here is sufficient and then uh, we'll we'll scan in your, your official signatures. Okay. I guess I will make a motion to uh, approve the RO and uh, or accept the RO and present it. I would second that. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Fair votes aye. Next on the agenda, approval of the audit report. Yeah, I apologize. That was done last month. So uh, okay. that's good. Moving on. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, how about the PSC report? Um, you should. You should have uh, embedded there the the actual report. Um, okay. Utility accountant has prepared that as usual, and we've submitted that to the PSC, and then. Each year, the bid, the board submits that to the council as well. All right. So, is there a motion to approve or to provide the uh, audit report? So moved. I'll second that. All in favor, say aye. 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 Fair votes, aye. 5.4, approval for engineering proposal for the river water main crossing. Uh, yes, this, uh, <clears throat> bring up one document here. Um, have is the proposal, the, uh, the design uh, engineering proposal from the ECOM. And I'm just going to reference uh, some information from Supervisor McMillan. Um, the location of this project is uh, adjacent to the Garden Toy Factory Apartments. If you can imagine the parking lot on kind of the southerly end of those apartments, we would have a, a river crossing perpendicular to the river at that point and exiting over on, on uh, Wisconsin Avenue on the other side. Um, A number of the existing river crossings and service are more than 100 years old. 
And except for the one to serve the area by the new uh, art uh, preserve, we haven't installed a river crossing in, in several decades. And one of the challenges of a river is that, um, you know, there's a lot of our water, most of our water demand is south of the river actually. And we have only a small number of pipes to move it down there. So even in, uh, we've kind of had, had one in mind and targeted for quite a few years, but uh, we're now moving forward with a design effort to actually get it in place. Um, <clears throat> it would propose to be bored under the river. Uh, the days of op open cutting the Sheboygan River are long gone due to sediment issues and, and just other concerns and boring is, is cheaper anyway. Um, so we had asked AECOM, who laid out uh, the boring by, by Lutheran High a few years ago, to give us a proposal for this new site. Um, it's a little more difficult site, more urban. There's a little less setup space, um, but it's at a critical point where we would need, where we would like to have more water distribution going under the river. Um, We did budget uh, for the engineering work and, and the proposal is really to do everything, including uh, inspection services during the project itself. And I think we've had <clears throat> good working experience with AECOM on a number of projects recently. Uh, they do employ some local engineers as well um and it's another example where we're working with you know several local engineering firms uh, and trying to keep those dollars local wherever it's feasible so in this case we would have a 600 foot water main crossing and all the work the design work associated with laying that out and, and bidding that out and uh, construction related services as well And there's a not to exceed clause in here? Uh, yeah, they, we have an estimated fee of 47875 and that would be not to exceed. Joe, just to be clear, this is engineering, including engineering services during construction, but not construction, correct? That's correct. Not, not any construction work itself, but the engineering documentation during construction. Do we have a feel for the uh, size of the lines diameter? Uh, and is either, it a single or is it a double? It's a single, probably 12 inch, possibly 16 inch, depending on. Okay. A few years ago, 16 inch was a lot more expensive than 12. We, we would rather have 16, but we need to kind of reassess what's the economics. I'm just curious, just because I watched a show recently about the pipeline crossing the Straits of Mackinac, uh, any feel for how deep this might be? It, it would be something underneath where we wouldn't have to worry about getting strikes by boats or anchors or anything of that nature, correct? Yeah, it would be, my guess would be at least 10 feet beneath the lake bed, okay. the river bed. Any other questions for Joel? None for me. If not, is there a motion to approve? So moved. I'll second that. All in favor say aye. 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 Their votes aye. Approved. All right, moving on. Uh, submission of or the WDNR needs survey. So we were invited uh, based on past participation to participate again in what's called the WDNR needs survey. And basically they look at a number of utilities through the state and they, they say, tell us 
your upcoming projects in the next 10 to 20 years. Um, and they try to use that information to kind of structure the loan program and how much they think they're going to need and what project demands might, might be like. Um, it's a pretty you know, significant amount of re requested work that we do for them, but it certainly helps us in terms of improving the loan program. Uh, so I would just report that we completed the needs survey and, and submitted that back to the DNR as, as requested. I'm sure they appreciate us. Yes, Keeping the lines sure. of communication open as well. Yep. Okay. And we don't have to take any action on that. That's just information, right? That's correct. All right. Moving on to the long awaited. 5.6 approval for the health insurance plan renewal. So I'll give a little introduction. I think the board members uh, uh, know Julie Meyer from Hub International. Julie's been our, our long, long standing health insurance uh, broker. Um, I'll make mention of some of the documents that you have to review. So Julie is going to review. <clears throat> the fully insured benefits spreadsheet. And she's going to review the 2021 spreadsheet final firm on self-funded plans um, at the beginning. And, and then we have um, a document called Advancement of Strategic Initiatives from Mr. Fioretti, who's been a health uh, plan consultant that we've been working with for about a, a year now. Um, and then we have a summary of health insurance analysis that was prepared by the utility accountant, buying some cost info. And then at the very end, we've got a summa, summary of health insurance data, which I will try to uh, present just in, in a basic form. And uh, I think the goal here is just to give the board all of the subjective information from, from parties involved in, in the plan and, and working to keep the plan economically viable for utility staff members. So with that, I'll, I'll turn it over for, to, Ju to Julie. Um, and again, she'll be reviewing the self-funded spreadsheet and the fully insured spreadsheet showing some renewal options. Yeah, I'll, I'll just go ahead and jump right in. Um, over the years, we've been fully insured um, quotes and you know comparing those to the self-funded plan. And the self-funded plan, historically, it's been more flexible um, for the plan members as far as benefit structure um, and also includes retiree coverage. The fully insured um, does not. And when you, when you compare benefit structure um, because of the Affordable Care Act, um, fully, fully insured is re re very, very limited in terms of plan designers and structure. Um, so if you look at the bottom line of each of those, you'll see that we're getting to a point where, you know, fully insured look, can be looking more competitive, but the out-of-pocket costs um, are quite a bit higher. And then um, in some cases, um, there's, there's network limitations. So um, leaving it at that, does anybody have any specific questions about what's in those spreadsheets? Um, I don't know if any, go ahead, Mark. Well, I was just gonna say, where would you like us to start? What, what document would you like us to start with, Julie? Yeah, so why don't we go with the fully insured and I'll admit I'm going a bit by memory right, right now because okay. I won't have as much access to technology as I normally would um, where I'm at. Um, but if you look at the fully insured on the very left hand side, you will see some presentations from Anthem Blue Cross and those are the most competitively priced. Um, you'll see the deductibles um, compared to the water utility. You'll see the uh, uh, co-insurance compared to the water utility. The water utility is at, currently at 100% coverage after the deductible. Um, Anthem has co-insurance. Um, you'll see some maximum out-of-pocket costs um, that are substantially higher than what the utility has right now. 
Um, and then you will also see um, some co-pays um, for physician services and some co-pays for uh, prescription drugs that we're comparing to what the utility has right now. Um, so, you know, that's the plan structure comparison. Um, if you go to the bottom line of the fully insured, you'll see the estimated um, annual costs. Um, and so that's where you'll start to see that some of the carriers have relatively low annual costs. Um, some of them are really, really, really high. Okay. Um, and then when you flip over to the self-insured spreadsheet, you'll see the current versus the renewal. And on, on the top, we start with the specific, we're buying a high deductible specific stop loss um, policy. Um, and so you'll see on the top line, the fixed cost for the premiums for that policy, um, along with the fixed costs um, associated with administration through Prairie Stakes. And then there's a line with total fixed costs and then some lines with expected costs um, based on um, expected claims. Um, there's a line for total expected costs. And then there's a line for worst case scenario. Um, so any questions on that so far? Okay. Um, now the thing with the expected costs and one of the reasons we continue, continuously look at fully insured plans is that especially on smaller groups of stop loss carriers in the last probably 10 years or so have started lasering out specific um, conditions. And last year we had two lasers. Um, this year we have one plus a conditional laser. Um, but that is the, how should I say, limitation that we're running into with, with self-insured plans. Um, so you'll see later, Lisa put together an analysis of, you know, what, where it's been good for the water utility in the past. Um, we're sort of coming to a crossing point, I think, where we need to look at fully insured, but also understanding that, you know, to the members, the plan isn't as, as good. And it hasn't been, you know, the culture really of the water utility to some private companies that, for lack of a better word, will um, quickly and rapidly um, change plan designs without much consideration, you know, for, for how it might consider the group or affect the people in the group. The water utility has not traditionally done that. Um, so that was the reason, I think part of the reason um, we brought Anthony in as an outside consultant um, to look at sort of, you know, does self-insured still make sense? And I think for the immediate term it does. Um, but to have some sort of a strategy for um, transitioning over to fully insured, um, if if that if that changes. So, um, Joe, did I adequately describe that, or is there anything you, you think I could address or add? I think oh, <clears throat> one thing on the self-insured spreadsheet, Julie, we did have the there was a renewal option with a $60,000 stop loss limit, a 70,000 and also an 80,000. Yeah, and the $80,000 stop loss deductible does reduce um, the fixed costs. And if you look at the difference between 60 and 80, it probably makes sense overall um, for the plan to switch to the $80,000 to keep that fixed cost down and that expected cost down. And the expected costs are what we use to calculate the employee's contribution to premium. So that also helps keep their contribution limits a little bit lower. Um, right now, the, the plan members are paying roughly 12% um, of, the, of the premium, roughly. And that's something too with working with Anthony. Um, we're looking at some options for you know restructuring those contributions. Um, you know, to, to maybe shift around single and family a little bit, but I don't think we have any immediate plans right now to to do anything drastic. I think Julie, on on the fully insured plans, there's a uh, a range from uh, about six hundred and fifty thousand dollars to eight hundred and nine thousand um, dollars. 
And one thing that was noted was um, retirees could not be on these fully insured plans. So currently a retiree, when they, when they retire, they have an option to stay on the utility plan, but they, they pay full dollar for it. So currently they're paying, I, off the top of my head, I can't re remember, but I think they're paying something like $1,900 a month for plan uh, under a fully insured scenario, they, they wouldn't be able to access the utility plan. They would have to go uh, in the marketplace. And one other note was that some of the other services under a self-insured plan, like uh, administration of the dental vision, uh, HIPAA and and some other elements like that are are not included with the with the fully insured plans. Julie, is is that correct? Um, that's correct. You would the the water utility would still need to pay for those separately. They would need to pay um, Cobra, um, HIPAA, and um, and medical and I mean dental and vision would still need to be paid for separately. And on top of what's on that benefit spreadsheet. So we can find another source for those, but that would be a separate, a separate vendor and a separate cost. So, you know, Anthony has looked at this. I've looked at, we have a bridge to go to fully insured um, if we need um, to do that. Um, but the recommendation and by the way, we don't have to wait until next June to do that if we need to pull the trigger earlier. Uh, but our we're we're losing you, Julie. We may have lost her, huh? Maybe she'll dial back in, but we could uh, jump to one of the other documents. <clears throat> The uh, 2021 summary health insurance analysis. For now is to remove the prairie states and the technology is great when it works. Burn stuff. Yeah. Well, you were going to talk uh, about the summary, Joe? Is yeah, that... I'll send Julia a note to dial in again. Um, but yeah, moving to the summary health insurance analysis document. <clears throat> so this was prepared by the utility accountant with info from Julie and others. And I would just review a couple of points here. In she did an analysis. Um, <laughs> that. Uh, oh, now she turned her mic off. Okay. Uh, but Lisa had done an analysis <clears throat> of 2011 to 2020 comparing the self-funded plan at the water utility uh, with costs if we had been on a fully insured plan. And by her numbers, you can see, uh, her numbers, you can see, uh, her numbers, you can see, uh, 
our actual cost was six point one nine million. And the fully insured plan cost would have been about six point one five million. So they were actually pretty close. Not sure why I'm echoing here now either. <laughs> oh, I came back in by phone and I'm trying to to get to yeah i'm in i'm in by phone now so hopefully this is better yeah sounds good julie okay we kind of lost you on your final recommendation i think yeah i apologize for that um where I, what i was um going to say is because of where we're at and you know it it's really really close between fully insured and self-insured, but at this point, from a financial standpoint, I should say really close, close not from a plan design um, standpoint. Um, at this point, I'm recommending that the water utility renew with Prairie States in the self-funded plan. Anybody else have any thoughts or? I'm sorry, Jerry. I didn't hear that. Anybody had any questions or thoughts? I think it might be helpful to look at uh, <clears throat> Mr. Fioretti's document, which is kind of talks about some of those bridges. If, if the board does determine to remain self-insured, so we've got this a document advancement of strategic initiatives. Um, and Anthony, you know, kind of the fruition of our year working with him has been a, a number of things, but he's got some recommendations here to reduce some cost on the self-insured plan in addition. Um, and basically they involve either increasing the deductibles or increasing co-insurance. You know, currently our out-of-pocket maximum is $850 for single and $1,800 for family coverage. And those, according to Anthony's benchmarks and in, in our industry are low. Um, so he has three alternatives, and in each case is is recommending an increase in those out-of-pocket maximums <clears throat> to get us closer to what are more benchmarked uh, figures uh, now. Um, so he has uh, option alternative A, B, and C, and I think uh, C is the most extreme. Uh, Increasing those out of pocket maxes from 850 to 2000 and 1800 dollars to 4000 kind of in one fell swoop. Um, the other two, A and B, are, are a little more moderated. Um, a uh, keeps the deductibles the same, uh, B has a slight increase in deductibles along with an increase in the co insurance. Um, the other thing which we had a presentation from Anthony on a couple months ago was this private clinic offering. And one of the strategic elements in the planning is also to offer uh, private clinics and to encourage people to use those uh, to, to try to uh, keep from kind of a steamrolling of costs within uh, some of the larger providers that that sometimes aren't uh, maybe beneficial uh, and can be addressed earlier at a private clinic setting where people are going more often and not kind of as a more urgent need situation. Um, so one of these alternatives would be, I think, should be considered if, if the board decides to renew a self-insured plan along with an increase in that stop loss that limit that Julie had mentioned. Um, 
And I think the other uh, note I would make is the final document, the uh, summary of health insurance data. <clears throat> and, and that's very short, just giving us a little information. Where, where did this info come from? Uh, Julie is here. Accountant Lisa has been involved and, and Anthony Freiretti as well. Um, the basic plan info we talked about, self-insured versus fully insured during that nine-year interval. Uh, if the board determines to, to remain self-insured, uh, there's also a recommendation to increase the monthly family coverage contribution. So currently family uh, contribution per month is $300. And that again was was identified in Anthony's benchmarks as a little bit low, uh, and there was a recommendation to increase that to 375. Uh, but keep the single unchanged because it it actually is in line with the benchmarks, the the premium or contribution for single coverage. And with those changes, the estimate was that uh, employees and retirees would be offsetting about 13% of costs due to direct contributions. Um, the other alternatives, the deductible changes, the co-insurance changes, you know, appeared to have potential savings of you know, anywhere from 10,000 to, to possibly $25,000 a year, you know, depending on exactly what happens in terms of case loads. <clears throat> it's a lot of data to look at on a TV screen or a monitor. Joe, do you have a feel for how many retirees are under the plan presently? Uh, three or four. And what I'm reading here is, and correct me if I'm wrong in my interpretation, but it sounds like we're still considering or recommending going with a self-insured plan and making some tweaks to it. There would be tweaks based upon the co-insurance and the uh, deductible, but not to the prescription coverage? Uh, possibly to the prescription coverage as well. In fact, probably um, Anthony had made that recommendation. And what we want to do, these changes would all take place on January 1. What we want to do is um, measure the impact um, to the members, how many members would be affected versus um, what the cost savings would be. In other words, if the cost savings were minimal, but were impacting many members in an adverse way, um, we'd maybe want to back off on that. He's suggesting, and I don't think it's a bad suggestion because it's steering people to generic drugs, but he's suggesting a $10 copay for generic drugs and then 70 30 coverage for all other drugs, meaning that the members would pay 30% of the cost of um, drugs other than generic. So then if I get it right, then we're basically talking plan A as recommended by Anthony, correct? If, if my recollection is correct, he had co-insurance on um, a number of the plan options. Yeah, yeah, he, he certainly did. And that sounds like the plan A with the insurance that you had mentioned, Julie. Right, and the 10% 10, 10 copay and 70 30 on all others. And uh, 80 20 co insurance, 1500 single out of pocket max, 3000 family out of pocket max. Right, that one has 30, 70 30 coverage on the uh, prescription drugs. Um, yeah. as does um, alternate B and alternate C. So the only drugs that would take a, 
$10 flat copay would be generic drugs on any of those three alternatives. Am I answering your question, Jerry? Or? I'm good. I'm good. Yeah. Mark, are you uh, satisfied or do you have other questions? I, I, I believe I understand it. One, one other question, Julia, and this is, I apologize for being ignorant on this. Could you help me understand what is a lasered cost, please? Yeah, so last year we had two lasers. Um, this year we have one laser. Um, my recollection again is $400,000 and then there's a big um, contingent laser, um, but that's not likely to be incurred because they're simply not covering something that's considered experimental and investigational, which isn't covered by the plan anyway, experimental and investigational. So, a, so a, to something the that's question, lasered would be, something that's lasered it would not be part of the plan? Is that, this This is this is uh, health insurance for dummies, Julie. Right, right, I understand. Um, what they're lasering is excluded by the plan as investigational and, and um, experimental and investigational, um, you know, should that particular laser one day get um, approval, you know, like FDA approval, that would be another reason for wanting to have a plan for bridging over to a fully insured plan. And again, there to the fully insured plan would not cover anything that's experimental and investigational. Okay, thank you. I think I would just add, Mark, um, we've seen laser, lasers before, and what the the normal laser means is that a, a certain individual, it's like a new stop loss limit for that individual. Right, that's a separate stop loss for that individual. Right, so they they have, we have seen this a number of years running now. Okay. Any other questions or comments? None here. No. Well, we need to uh, decide what we want to do. And we've got to we've got to do that at this meeting, correct, Julie? <coughs> Excuse me. We need a decision before June first. Right. Right. We either make well, a decision now or we have a special meeting. Yeah, so this is the other thing that I, I just want to make clear. Um, we're setting a path for being able to maneuver off of June 1st if we need to. Um, we had discussions about January 1st, you know, pulling the trigger on January 1st, but um, if we needed to, we could do it sooner than that. But the idea being not to, um, you know, caused a disruption for a lot of people in the plan um, suddenly and unexpectedly. It gives us a little bit of time to see what's going on as well. I'm sorry, Jerry, that was kind of muffled for me. Okay, I'm, I'm saying it just, um, it, it gives us a little time to analyze exactly the effect on everybody in the plan. Yeah, I apologize. I. I couldn't catch that. Okay. Um, it, it just gives us a little more time. Right, right, exactly, exactly. Is there a motion to continue with the self insured plan? I'm sorry, could you say that again? I said, I'm asking for a motion on approving the self-insured plan. Oh, okay. All right. Thank you. I will move that we continue with the self-insured plan as recommended. I will second that. Any further discussion? Hearing none, uh, we'll take a motion on just uh, I guess approving the self-insured plan 
now do we take a motion to change the some of the I guess the the deductible, the copay, and or the prescription drug coverage um, to what was presented in basically all um, uh, ones A, B, or C. That was a change that we were proposing for January one. So okay. I'm not I'm not on the board, but my recommendation would be to maybe hold off on that motion and and um, vote That's for right. or January first. Yeah. Okay. All right. I, I think I would request if, if the board is going that direction, though, it would be a employee contribution would become effective June first if the board uh, wanted to make that increase. And that employee contribution would go from twelve percent to thirteen percent of the actual plan cost, correct? Yeah, roughly. So uh, yeah. 300 to 375 a month for family coverage. Yeah. I would so move. I'll second that. All in favor say aye. 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 Fair votes aye. Hey, aye. Excuse me, I'll be right. I'll be right back. <laughs> I have to take a quick break. To discuss on health insurance. I'm sorry, Jerry. I said anything else we need to discuss on the health insurance topic? I don't think so. Unless much. Julie had something to add. No, not on the health insurance specifically. No. Mm -mm. What do you want to do? Talk about baseball or? <laughs> so did Thanks you have the, the did you have the clinic next on the agenda? Well that would all be part of this topic, yeah. Yeah, I think we, we have to discuss the private clinic then because I, I thought the uh changes for January 1st would be acted on. So when Mark comes back, we'll have to revisit that. Okay. Yeah, and we, we can even do that as soon as, you know, a month or two from now in the next month or two meetings. Um, I, I'd like to analyze the prescription impacts a little bit more deeply first. That 70-30 is a, a significant change for members. Right, but we could still act on, on the board could still act on the private clinic, just that adding that aspect regardless. Or are you recommending waiting on that, Julie? No, I'm not recommending waiting on the private clinic. I am recommending on waiting on the plan changes. They'll be impl implemented on January 1, um, but for, for further analysis, um, you know, for June or, Jan or July meeting. Okay. Well, we'll just hold until Mark gets back, I guess. There he is. I'm back. There he is. Yeah, the dog needed to go outside. <laughs> <laughs> Priorities. Um, one thing that uh, Joe brought up that we should probably um, bring up at this time or is, is what do we do about the private clinics? take action on that now. I don't see a problem with that whatsoever. I think it's a good option. I think so too. Especially if, if we're thinking about making changes in the future, it's a it's an opportunity to progress and have people get used to the idea. Right. Um, do you have any thoughts? I think uh, private um, option is a great idea. I think it gives the employees a lot more flexibility in how they get their health care. All right. Is there a motion to, uh, Joe, did we, anything else that we need to discuss on that or to elaborate on? Uh, I don't think so, no. Okay. So we need a motion to uh, 
uh, approve adding the, the private clinics to our plan. I'll move that we do that. I'll second that. And as far okay. as discussion goes, uh, would we need to have some sort of a plan laid out or do we have a sufficiently fleshed out plan right now that we can go ahead just by saying that here, here's the plan? It's <clears throat> fleshed out and it would be with the, the two uh, uh, providers that are shown on, on the document. Uh, I can't recall the name, name of them right off. It used to be Palladium or Paladina, they're renamed, and, and then the uh, facility on Superior Avenue. Which document is that in? It's not in one of the five we have today, is it? I haven't seen it. Uh, no, I'm sorry. It, it's, yeah, it's a separate. Yeah, okay. it isn't in the board docs. But it lists those two uh, entities as the private clinics. Okay. So there would be some limits. They can't just go anywhere. Right. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Chair votes aye. Motion carried. Anything else, Julie? No, there's not, other than thank you for the patience with my internet connection. <laughs> okay. Well we'll be we'll be talking again, I'm sure. I'm sure too. And happy tax day. Yeah, thank you. It's nice seeing you again, Julie. Thanks, Julie. Thank you. Bye now. All right. Bye. Bye. All right. Number five seven. DNR sanitary survey results. <clears throat> um, we should have the actual uh, document from the, the DNR uh, on their recent visit in April. And they really uh, just issued a couple very minor corrections, which is typical. Um, screening on some overflow pipes and the height of uh, an overflow pipe, things of that nature, nothing nothing real significant. But we'll take care of those and uh, make the corrections and uh, keep moving forward. Okay. Any questions on that from the board member? So it's just these four. Go ahead, Tom. Sorry. It looks right. I said the report looks pretty clean. It's those four minor ones. And their yeah. long term stuff, all stuff will be covered by the raw, raw water improvement. Right. All right. Approval is not required on that. Again, that's information. So moving on to 5.8 approval of replacement of lead service lines on Indiana Avenue. <laughs> So Indiana Avenue is, is an upcoming DOT project and we've joined in to re replace some very deep and old water main. And it turns out there are uh, several uh, parcels there that, that do not have water service to the, to the right of way um, because they're either not developed or they're in the town of Sheboygan. And I think because of all the work going into the roadway, in this case, we would like to uh, incur the cost of installing four water laterals to the curb now. And then if, when those properties are annexed and, and want water to be connected, they would pay uh, back the connection fee of that amount to the water utility and we would not have to dig up the road to connect them to water. And we've done this before. Yes. I would move for approval. I would second it. And just for my benefit, this will be out towards the 
uh, Lutheran High University area? Yeah, it would be east of that. East of that, okay. Yep. Yeah, that's that's actually town of Sheboygan, and um, yeah, this is just uh, I guess a um, a way to uh, plan ahead, you know, for the future. At some point, if um, we have to serve water, we've got it out there. We don't have to turn around and you know go through all kinds of hassles at that time. That's right. Any further discussion? I'm good. No, sir. Okay, so before we go into closed session, uh, all in favor say aye. 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 Chair votes aye. All right, next on our agenda, back to that, is basically we need a motion to go into closed session. Pursuant to section 19.85 per N1 per NC, the purpose of considering employment, promotion, compensation, and performance evaluation data of a public employee uh, or public employees over which the governmental body has jurisdiction or exercises responsibility. We will go back into open session after the closed session. Um, is there such a motion? So moved. Is there a second? I'll second it. All in favor say aye. 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 Chair votes aye. I do not have video, so you, one of you have to tell me if we are um, now in closed session. All right, we are back in open session. Um, and uh, I would like to make a motion to accept Joe Trueblood's um, recommendation on the engineering department and uh, the board will review um, all senior or all supervisory positions between now and the end of the year. All uh, all exempt positions, correct? All exempt positions, yeah. Okay. I'll second that. Any further discussion? Nope. None. All in favor say aye. Aye. Chair votes aye. Next thing on the agenda is our next meeting, uh, which would take place on June 21st, that being the third Monday. Any problems, conflicts? I'm good. As am I. Um, you think we'll still be virtual, Joe? Well, I don't know what, how does the board feel about that? And one more month or? I think let's take a look at it before that meeting and we will make that decision uh, well in advance um, so we don't have to wait until the last minute. One question I would have when we get to there is how is your family doing? Is, are we giving any risk to your family by meeting in person? Um. I, I'll, I'll keep evaluating that, Mark. I think it could be pretty, pretty minimized. You know, the further we go along. So I think the three of us are all fully vaccinated now. Yeah. So there's there's not much risk to us to getting together. I just want to make sure that your family's safe. I, I agree. Yeah, well, I appreciate Thanks. that. Well, again, let's set the date and we'll determine whether it's in person or virtual for one more month. and. And go from there. Very good. Sounds good. All right. With that, the next motion is a motion to adjourn. So moved. I second it. All right, gentlemen, have a great evening. I'm going back to tax returns. Have fun. <laughs> we are adjourned. I got five extensions to do yet. So. Wow. Better you than us, Jerry. What's yes, that? Indeed. Better you than any of us. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks. All right. Enjoy Bye. your evening, guys. Bye. Bye.